What's up, Bills fans? I mean, I picked the damnedest times to do Bills videos because on a day after I do the Bills video, obviously, the biggest the biggest Bills news always seems to just happen. So I guess if I do a video, I should expect Bills decent, you know, seismic uh, Bills news the following day. But, yeah, obviously I felt compelled to do a video the, you know, slightly the day after and Bill's name their starting quarterback for the 2015 season, the much speculated and talked about and bantied about, um, debated quarterback competition is over, and Tyrod Taylor is the winner of that competition. That didn't shock me. I, you know, being, you know, conditioned to believe the Bills will always play it safe and go the conservative route. Honestly thought that we'd see Castle to at least start the season and that Taylor would be, you know, used in packages and worked in and possibly if Castle were to falter, Taylor would have been inserted pretty pretty quickly. So but this again doesn't shock me in the least. Uh, I told you my prior video he's really impressed me with his work with his arm. We knew what kind of athlete we knew he was, but he's he stood in the pocket and made some throws really has a lot a live arm uh, an arm that you, you don't expect on a guy of his stature but he really can really sling it he really knows how to spin it and that's that's good to see and I think the better he can throw the football the more it opens up his ability to really hurt a team you know late in the game when they're tired and they're beat up and he can really you know use those legs to to and, and just totally decompress the defense, you know, picking up, you know, 20, 30 yards to extend a drive or get the team in field goal range or, you know, just to basically, you know, bleed the clock and, and win a game or to score a game winning touchdown. And, you know, that was uh, obviously the preceding news was the, the news that, you know, struck. Uh, the hearts of a lot of Bills fans of the uh, release of Fred Jackson and for me I, I feel that uh, I'll tell you this you know he, he was a very he was a guy that was revered by Bills fans he was the the story that you know you make movies about and movies are made about and everybody wanted to see the fail fairy tale ending for him and it just it wasn't in the cards um, unfortunately he you know plays a position with a lot of impact and he's been injured three of the last four years he's missed quite a few games in those years and you know at his age and, and the salary he was making it wasn't um, you know like the organization said it didn't work out for them to to, to come to, you know, terms to where he could stay. You know, I don't think money was talked about, and it, it could have been. I don't know. None of us do, but he's, you know, he's a guy that will always be missed and looked upon, you know, very fondly amongst Bills fans. And and then I go on the side of, you know, Bills, the Bills as an organization for a long time have operated under the sentimental... You no. Know, tight. You know we. You know uh, how do I word this correctly? You know there was always guys we knew were going to be on the roster, right? You know there was always these guys, and there was never a chance that they'd be gone. There was always going to be guys, and then we'd see younger guys go to other teams and like, oh that guy's good. Why didn't the Bills keep him? Because they kept these guys and. It didn't open up opportunities for these these guys, these other guys, to flourish because there's only so many opportunities during a, an actual NFL game where there's 40. At the time, there was only 45 guys up, and you had the emergency quarterback dress, and he could only play in case the, the preceding two quarterbacks got hurt, and he would hold the clipboard basically. And now it's 46, and you get to kind of designate a guy. He can play in the game, though. So the roster dynamic was different. Um, the uh, the practice squad was, I think, at six. It went up to 
it was at, it was like at eight, six or eight, I believe, and then it went up to ten. And so that opened up a thing where teams started, we're only gonna carry two and we carry one on the practice squad. And it's uh you know, the roster dynamics have changed. And that and that's you know, what would happen. The Bills would let guys go, but you know, get back to Fred. You know, he was he was a productive player for them for a long time. And it you know, it was always there's there was never a right time. There was never a right time. I feel like the Bills, you know, we all know the Bills wanted to do this. The Bills football people wanted to do this in March and they were you know it it went over their head with Pagula. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. I, I, I hated that anytime you had ownership usurping management and football people and the coaches, it is not good. It is not a good precedent to set. It, it is not good at all. We've seen it. You can't like it. You can't have one and not have the other because Bills fans, we've seen it before. <laughs> Ralph came down and said, you're starting Rob Johnson. Flutie's sitting. Everybody likes Flutie, though. You know, so, of course... You know, for the majority of Bills fans, it was an unpopular decision. And Ralph, with his meddling ways, ran a lot of good football people out of town. He ran them out of town. You know, he was he he thought he was a football guy, and he ran you know, guy went into the Hall of Fame. He ran off Butler. He he then ended up bringing in guys that weren't good enough at the job and then he eventually couldn't even give the job away and this is what happens you, you don't want to start that that especially for no owner like Pagula you don't want to start that that forest fire because you, you can't put it out you can't put it out look at how what Washington goes through you know even if you know, management, the ownership, and the coach did sat down and say, you know, we're we're going to go with Kirk Cousins over RG3. We're done with him. We're moving on. Nobody's going to believe him because of the way Snyder's operated in the past and how coaches come and go there, and and everybody knows his fondness for Griffin. So it's it's you can't. There's no people. It's perception is becoming. It's 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 reality, but. You know, it, it's it's a tough day. You know, Fred is a good guy. He he was definitely a leader in the team and a face of the, the franchise, albeit a franchise that was very mediocre and wasn't a winning franchise. And whether, you know, fans want to accept that he was a part of that or not, he has the culpability in it. Um, you know, and that's just the, this is the reality. Anybody that was there. And until that changes, it's always going to be that way. And that's that's the truth. Not to, you know, be a, a fan that wants to be, you know, you say black, I say white. I, it's not that at all. I mean, I, I, I do I think he belongs on the wall, the ring? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think he does. And I think, like I've stated before, OJ's name should be removed. Do you want to win-win? Put his name up there, get OJ's name off. Because, yes, I do think it matters. I, Me, personally, I think it matters how you are as a person. I think your character and how you are as a person matters. And when the Bills do bring in character guys, I, I do question it. Of course I do. When it was Incognito or whoever else, the, you know, IK and Polly, anybody like that. I've always questioned it. The fact is, if you win, the guy produces, and no noise is made, then it's no concern. But, you know, back to, you know, but here we go. We have a season to play. And I, I were a little, you know, a little under two weeks away. And there was no... You know, they had they were at the precipice with this the quarterback decision. You know, you're gonna start allocating reps and you're gonna start getting your core guys ready because they know who their core 40, 44, 46 guys are. They know. 
if there's a roster spot or two at the end of that 40, okay. But then, you know, we know teams now play around with that back seven. And then obviously the practice squad is, you know, guys from other teams and some guys that you like from yours that you want to bring back that you've had during the, the summer mini camps and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you re now it's you're getting your guys ready to go. It's time to, to go for Indy. It's time to, you know, do a little for them to start doing advanced on New England. But, you know, it, it was that time, and here we are. Um, football's right around the corner. I, I, I said it in my prior video that on Saturday, you know, just felt like, okay, here we go. It's, it's football season. It feels good. I mean, in a few days, we're going to start seeing college football. And that'll, uh, that'll have us primed and ready to go. I, I, I can't wait. It's, I love this time of year. I do. I, I love it. And it's a sad time of year. It's a sad time for a lot of guys who get told, you know, their NFL dream is done. You know, however temporarily or you know, whatever time frame they face. You know, they don't, obviously, you see tons of stories, you know, Fred being having been one of them where, you know, he didn't give up and he kept going and, you know, he's probably going to latch on for a year somewhere, no doubt. No doubt. You know, I was, I, I said on Twitter earlier, you know, and, and you couldn't, I don't think, no Bills fans argued it with me. It's, it bothered me when, when Pagula said no. And I think there was a lot of positive buzz around the organization at the time, having just hired Rex and, Marone being exposed as such a device, to, you know, a divisive figure, you know, such a, you know, a, a guy that was so disliked within the, the walls at One Bills Drive that, you know, they didn't want to hurt that. They didn't want to disrupt that. You know, they were selling their, you know, sold record season tickets, you know, all the haze in the barn. You know, you don't need to read the tea leaves. And they waited all the way up until now. And they did, you know, give him some time to latch onto a team, and I think he will. But again, this is the decision they wanted to make months ago, and they were told no. I think for a few different reasons, but in the end, they got what they wanted, and that's that's important to me. That should be important to Bills fans because we shouldn't want ownership meddling in football decisions. We shouldn't. And um, it's just funny. I was thinking about the first time, you know, the first time I saw Fred. First time probably all of us saw him was the Sean Taylor game against Washington, where they decided to field the ten guys and have in honor of Sean Taylor. And then on the same day, a guy named Taylor, you know, in this case Tyrod Taylor, is named the Bills starting quarterback, which was a fairly popular decision amongst most Bills fans. It's just it's this irony. It really is. On the day that he's released, that's it's just irony. But, you know, Tyrod being named the starter, and it's definitely new bills. It's been new bills since, you know, Marone decided to step down. You know, the ownership was settled. Obviously, we knew we were going to our first offseason where that was not going to be talked about ever again. I mean, we were already into the season last year when the sale was finalized. I think it was the third or fourth game. But we knew that it was well underway and the team was you know most likely staying in buffalo but still it was very tenuous it was very you know pins and needles we all know how it was and this is the first time we've all gotten to relax and kind of just think about football as a fan base you know and i'm sure the people at one bills drive have done the same it's it's tough but i mean it's it's a business you know it's a business like any other business and there comes a time and place where everybody gets told, you know, it's, you know, your time is up. In this case, it was Fred's. And, you know, I wish him the best. We all do. But, you know, I mean, I remember Kelly retiring. I remember Thurman leaving. I remember, you know, Bruce and Reed and Redskins jersey. And obviously Thurman and the Dolphins jersey. A um, bunch of guys. And that's why today really doesn't. You know, hit me, I guess, as hard as it's hitting a lot of other Bills fans because I, I remembered how, you know, 
the reality of the NFL really hit me in my teenage years where, you know, my grandmother sat me down and explained to me, look, these guys can't play forever. There comes a time where they're physically incapable of it. And younger guys are going to come. They're going to come up and they're going to take their place. And whether they're good or not, or just as good or, or better or not as good, the only time will tell. And so I, I, I ingested that and took that in very, very quickly. But, you know, I'm just all about looking forward, the future, you know, seeing, and, and, and I feel like, you know, it's been, new, like I was saying, like I said prior, I feel like it's been new bills since, you know, you know, the, the hiring of Rex, Marone stepping down. Um, I feel like it's a blessing in disguise at the time. It, it's, I, the same old bills is, you know, Marone's the coach still, and there's all this mopiness and, you know, very stiff, like, uh, edgy, like, defensive thing going on. And Castle would have been instantly named the starter. There would have been no questions. There were really wouldn't have been much, if any, competition because that's the safe way to go. And, I mean, even me, I thought this is a safe way to go. It's just how I'm conditioned to think these football people think. And most of them do. You know, with, you know, you look at Hoyer in Houston. Most of the fan base and a lot of that media want to see Mallet. And I know that him oversleeping after a practice, after, a, you know, missing a practice because I'm oversleeping is not a good look. But at the end of the day, they all know what Hoyer is. And they'd rather see what Mallet is or isn't more of it. I can't say I blame them, but again, only time will tell. So we're going to get to see what Tyrod is. And um, another question is, they've said they're going to keep three quarterbacks, and the wild card is, which three? Because Sims is there. And it, would I be shocked if they put Sims on the practice squad? And, you know, obviously Tyrod's making the team and move or release Castle because I don't think they're releasing EJ because his contract's guaranteed. And then Castle carries, you know, like a four point whatever million dollar cap number. So he, they might want to do some work there and see what happens. I mean, it wouldn't shock me in the least. I mean, after, you know, Bills fans should see Fred being released today says, be prepared for anything. Be prepared for anything. Anything could happen. We saw it with Alonzo being traded. That shocked Bills fans for McCoy. Um, Arvin choosing to sign with the Bills. Um, we'll see. I, I mean, you know, and Fred being released today, like I said, don't be shocked. Don't be, don't let anything surprise you now. Because we'll, we're going to probably see another one. I wouldn't doubt it. It, you know, can't pit, put your finger on it, but it's always something. It's always something comes to you, whether it's a, a little trade. I mean, nothing really big, but a guy gets moved, swapped out for a conditional draft pick, or, excuse me, or there's an exchange of pieces, like you like this player, you like this player, you like player A, you like player B, the money is the same, let's do a swap, or... You know, they're able to reduce Castle's number and he stays. Maybe they like EJ's progression and they release Castle. And they don't own the money. And then they have EJ and they have him for, they have his rights for another year after this even. So, I, I don't know. And I think for them it's sink or swim with Tyrod. And if he sinks, if he sinks, then the Bills are going to be drafted in the top five. And they're going to get a shot at a a quarterback, and if he swims, this team's in the playoffs. That's that's the way it is. And I think that's a good thing. I really do. Because it, looking back at it, Castle would have been like the Orton and Fitz. They're just good enough to keep you away from drafting one of the top quarterbacks 
but they're not good enough to get you to and Tyrod is the complete he is he is the enigma he is Tyrod is an enigma that's what he is we should just nickname him enigma because we don't know we just don't know what we're getting and it's almost like having a a drafted quarterback win the starting job and even though he's thrown a few token passes here and there we'll see but it's a, it's definitely like wow let's see how this plays out and makes it a little fun which i think a lot of times gets lost in the nfl because it's so business you know very corporate unfortunately in a lot of ways no celebrating no dunking on the thing and just dumb shit that the nfl just constantly has to make itself so you know I'm buttoned down and like so I'll just ugh, I'll just stop it it's a game and they just I think they take themselves too seriously sometimes all right Bills fans I'll digress and um, we'll see what you think see what your thoughts and opinions are about all of it I know a lot of Bills fans are upset about Freddie you know I'm not sitting here celebrating or anything like that I mean, it's just like, it happens, it's, you know, uh, and I even said, you know, we all hate Belichick, you know, including me, but I always felt one of his, if not his strongest attributes as a coach was to not emotionally attach himself to players. He was always able to have it, he knew the business and said, well, look, you know, nobody was, and I think that, that sort of thing was like look if you don't do your you know i hate to say that but do your job and do it well you're gone you know he's just gonna give it to somebody else it doesn't matter who you are what your name is what your reputation is what you did wherever else you used to play it's a matter of what you do now and they have high practice standards that's something i do know that they they practice and their practices matter and if you don't practice well during the week, you don't play any games. That's why sometimes you see surprise, you know, inactives there with them and stuff. All right, Bills fans, again, I want to hear what you think, your comments, your feedback. I appreciate your views. It's sorry for the long video, 22 minutes is, is long, but it's um, a wild day. It was a wild day in, um, in Bills fandom. Um, but I, I think it was a good one. It was a good one. It's definitely not same old bills. Definitely not, you know, business as usual over there anymore in terms of the, you know, just going along to get along. We got to appease everybody. We got to, you know, play nice. It's, you know, sometimes, you know, in the business of football, you see it in other places. You have to make hard decisions, tough decisions, and they're not always popular ones. So. We'll see, Bills fans. You have a good rest of the week. Take care. Enjoy, you know, the rest of your summer. I know kids are going back to school. I don't have any children, but I'm sure a lot of you do. Some of you do. So be safe and take care.